what the central bank is going to look like in terms of members of the board and how that's going to influence policy going forward? Yes, I think, I think it's uh, very likely that the members in the FOMC will be slightly more hawkish. Uh, as Sri has mentioned, I think overnight, the, if you look at the composition of uh, members, how confident they are in terms of uh, core PC, the risk being balanced, I think the skill is improving. Uh, I think that uh, the risk is skewed towards uh, the FOMC upgrading their rate hike projections from three to four over the course of 2018, uh, given that the economy is booming, uh, fiscal tax cuts, uh, and uh, the core PC is likely to be uh, transitory. Uh, that may give the dollar a bit of a boost uh, over the coming months, but I think that over the medium term, uh, the strength in the dollar is unlikely to be sustainable. I think there are several reasons for that. Uh, yes, uh, the US economy is growing above trend rate, uh, but the rest of the world is also doing very, relatively very well. Uh, and if you look at, uh, mm. in, in, based on projections from various organisations like the IMF, uh, global growth will remain relatively firm in 2018 vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, 2017. And if you look at the US economy, uh, they're less uh, export-oriented, and which means that they are likely to benefit less uh, in the strong global growth environment. And of course, we have discussed this before, that the Fed is very well advanced in terms of their tightening uh, monetary policy, whereas the rest of the world is still at a very advanced stage. So the gap between where benchmark rates are now versus where the estimated neutral interest rate I think uh, the Fed is nearer and therefore mm. that will give the dollar so, less boost. So we've had a couple of experts on the program over the last couple of days talking about the euro and the euro being very much being the focus for, for 2018 and the fact that, you know, we're sitting around the 120 level now. Some are saying 125, right? Some are going as far as 127 uh, by year end. If we're not going to see a huge amount of strength or if the strength that we're seeing in the dollar is only temporary, where do you see the euro at year end? I think we, we have a euro dollar forecast uh, by the end of this year around 125. Uh, I think that uh, no doubt if you look at uh, there are several reasons or catalysts why the euro has popped towards a 120 level in the beginning of this year. Uh, I think number one is uh, at the end of last year, we have seen uh, economic data and surveys, consumer confidence in the Eurozone mm. much stronger than expected. Uh, and what this means is that uh, despite the strength in the Euro, I think the Eurozone economy is doing relatively well, supported by domestic demand. Uh, number two, we have also heard some relatively hawkish comments from ECB officials that uh, the uh, extension of the asset purchase program to uh, the third quarter of this year could well be the last. Uh, and, and that has uh, raised market expectations that the ECB could even uh, raise interest rates by the end of this year. Mm. Uh, and I think that the hurdle rate for, for the ECB or even Draghi to, to be a bit dovish or to talk down the currency given uh, recent uh, strong economic data, I think the hurdle rate is relatively high. Uh, but the worry here is that the ECB has a sole mandate, which is just inflation, and it's not about just GDP and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and clearly, core inflation in the Eurozone remains very, very subdued. So I think it's a tough balancing act for the, for the ECB to manage the strength in the Euro, uh, such, that, such that it does not really temper uh, core inflation, and, and, and to manage in such a way that they may not extend asset purchase, uh, the program uh, past third quarter, but the first rate hike may be likely to be ways, in 2019. Roy.